if I thought it offended somebody. And I, I had to realize that we, we cannot judge other generations by the morality that, that is the current standards right now. Uh, I'm glad it's changed. I'm glad that uh, nobody can do that anymore. But uh, at the time, it was part of, a, uh, of the show business convention. And, and uh, it brought back, you know, minstrel, this is a point I make in the film, in the book. Um, there were more blackface movies made during World War II than in the 30s when Eddie Cantor and Al Jolson, and I, in, in a footnote, I give 60 titles that were made wow. between 1940 and 45. Um, minstrelsy had an enormous comeback at the very moment that we're fighting the racial barbarism of uh, the, Nazis. the Nazis and the Japanese. Um, why is that? And it's very easy to find out why. It's because minstrelsy represented a kind of cultural continuity and made people feel nostalgic for the entertainment that they had enjoyed when they growing were growing up. up. So, it, you know, it's a very different world. Linda, we have to do a meeting next year on Al Jolson. I think it's long yeah. overdue. Yeah. Applause, applause. Anyhow, <laughs> hey, Gary, do you, want to, do you have any books to sell? Or? Well, there could be an Oklahoma land rush to the stage. Gary only has four copies of the book, so if you want one, this is your chance. And um, we have a, we, you know, the expression, thanks for the use of the hall. Uh, we have some clips that we'll show now that Gary has to go, but we might as well start showing them. And uh, Gary, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, really. There's a waitress here today. If anybody wants to order food, we have to, uh, we have to get out of here by two. But the, we have a menu, and you certainly uh, can speak to the waitress and have some snacks or anything else. So thanks uh, a lot. And we're waiting for you to get your clips. All right. Yeah, Marty. Is Marty there? Marty? Okay. Yeah, just start rolling whatever's there. Uh, I, I only have one. So oh, it's I thought he said four. Okay. I think we're going to start with um, Bing's first feature, the big broadcast. And again, this is this is uh, wonderfully described in, in volume one, Pocket Full of Miracles. Bing's first feature has long relationship with the pioneering jazz guitarist Eddie Lang. And this is Bing and Eddie Lang doing what became a great standard. Please, which is Andrew Porritz knows, was the inspiration uh, for the Beatles doing Please Please Me 30 years later. So uh, it, sh it shows you Crosby's long-term effect on uh, popular culture. A few hours more and we're off to the greatest start in a broadcast studio ever. Try right, once more. Please lend you little ear to my plea. Lend a ray of cheer to my plea. Tell me that you love me too. Well, I think I know it. Morocco. 
Our favorite Brooklyn Ben Houston song. With your Watch him with the rose bread. I never know the rose bread. Call the right man. Well, 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 Tonight, you're all dressed up to go dreaming. Now don't tell me I'm wrong. But what a night to go dreaming. No, 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 no. Mind if I tag along? If I say I love you, I want you. No, it's not just because there's moonlight, although moonlight becomes you so. What a beautiful view Moonlight and you You're all dressed up to go dreaming And don't tell me I'm wrong but What a night to go dreaming Mind if I tag along, if I say I love you, I want you to know, it's not just because there's moonlight, I think show clips. Dixie, which was one of Bing's biggest hits during the war years, and one of the biggest hit songs of the war years. Again, Berkeley Van Houston. If you're satisfied, I'll at your side. Sunday, Monday, or always. No need to tell me now what makes the world go round. When at the sight of you, my heart begins to pound and pound, and what am I to do? Can I be with you Sunday, Monday, or always? Oh, Dan, that's the nicest song you've written yet. You like it? Sunday, Monday, or all. Never mind the Sunday and Monday part, but don't you forget about all of us. <laughs> the list of poets. Playing in 1970 with Dean Martin, who was one of his biggest of the fans and, and or students. Really Aristotle, Homer Khayyam, Thoreau, Wordsworth. <laughs> As they say down around the library, that's, that's a pretty heavy group. But uh, somewhere down the line there are the names of some modern-day poets and philosophers. Only nowadays we call these chaps uh, songwriters. And I'm a little more familiar with them, I must say. And I would like to uh, review just a few of the things that they've laid down on our subject. And I shall be assisted in my endeavors by the Prince of Leisure himself, the Lord of Lethargy, the Sultan of the Supine, Duke of Drowsy, <laughs> Signor Dino Martini. <laughs> I do nothing here. I'm the 
there, you know. Oh, that's where yeah. I was? Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 I think that was arranged by Herb Alpert. Um, this is the best film I've found yet of Bing and Gary Crosby, his first son. And this is the only film I found of them doing their number one hit, Play a Simple Melody by Irving Berlin. And making it even better, it's got the great uh, Dixieland New Orleans clarinetist Pete Fountain at his group. So this is, this is really a great clip. Like my mother sang to me. Play some simple melody. Come well, out, it's musical demons that your honey got dreaming. Won't you play me some rag? Yeah, the whole Just story. change that classical nag. Yeah, yeah some sweet, beautiful drag. I read you. If you can play from a copy of the tunes and the chopper, you get all my applause. Yes, that is simply because I won't listen to rag. Okay, this, of course, is the famous, uh, one of Bing's most famous moments, Now You As Jazz, which he sang in high society with Louis Armstrong and the All-Stars. Uh, that's a wonderful piece of footage, but this one is even better. This is Bing and Louis doing it live, not, not pre-recorded, but live on national television in 1957, and the rapport between them is just amazing. Here, I'll let you see. Well, you take some skin... Jazz begins. Take a bass. And now we're getting someplace. Take a box. One that rocks. Take a blue horn. New Orleans bar. Take a stick. With a lid. Take a bone. Cool and hot Now you have jazz, 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 jazz Flip to dot song Listen to, well, you 
until they throw us out. We have until two, you said? Yeah. Linda? Okay. Uh, quarter up. All right, quarter. I want to plug two things while we are still here. Uh, first of all, everybody's still here. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight on this wonderful warm day. Uh, my original joke, which I forgot to tell, was we should have had a clip of Bing doing June and January. Um, <laughs> would have been apropos. Uh, two things to quickly plug. Uh, my next big event is at the Film Forum on January 27th. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald sings the George and Ira Gershwin songbook, which is a, an encore presentation of a show uh, we originally did for Ella Fitzgerald's Centennial three years ago. Uh, it's two hours of Ella, Ella Fitzgerald at the height of her height, as Pops would say, doing exclusively Gershwin songs from filmed concerts, television, everything, and it's really extraordinary. Uh, really a great, if I do say so myself, it's a great presentation and it's just wonderful to see the greatest singer ever doing the greatest songs ever. Item number two, wait, wait, what time uh, is it? oh, January 27th, I don't have the time memorized. Uh, it's Monday. I'll, I'll implore you, I could look it up right now, but uh, the next item, as Andrew Poritz well knows, and Daniel Dunlow well knows, and Marty Glasper possibly even, uh, we, Andrew and I, are launching a new series, we hope will be a series, called The Green Room 42 Swings Sinatra. And it's going to be an ongoing series of uh, honoring the Frank Sinatra songbook as performed by the best jazz singers and the contemporary pop singers as, as with a jazz beat as we can get. And that's considerable uh, for the first the first installment, which will be on Friday, February 21 at 7 p.m. Is that specific enough? Um, I believe it's 7 p.m. Uh, we are going to have uh, Gabriel Stravelli, Alexis Cole, who, who, oh, uh, uh, Danny Bacher, our, my co-producer, Andrew Ports, and uh, details are still being worked out. Is there anyone I forgot? Uh, oh, the wonderful Anna East Reno who's certainly a formidable talent, but we're hoping it's going to develop into a regular series and we're only going to get uh, singers who know where the beat is to honor you know, Sinatra's jazz legacy. So it should really be something. So Friday, February 21. All right, we will continue now with the clippage. Next up, I believe, is being in 1961, uh, one of the things he always wanted to do was to work with Maurice Chevalier. So this is uh, uh, Bing and Chevalier on Crosby Special doing what they call the Little Black Book Medley, which is a medley of songs built around girls' names. Uh, Marty, whenever you're ready. Thank you guys for inviting me. Very exciting. Isn't she a lovely girl, Maurice? Lovely. Yes, yes. She reminds me of a girl I once knew. You know, Maurice, I just read your autobiography with love. And it seems to me every page in that book reminds you of a girl that you once knew. 
But so candidly, what I would like to see is the original version. Your, uh, your little black book. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. no, 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 me, you know. The little black book, only Maurice reads it. I suppose uh, it's in French. Uh, in French and in code. Oh, in code. <laughs> Imagine being so sneaky about a little bitty old address book. But you know, it's a lot of fun reminiscing and writing about the girl you once knew. You know, I think you got something there. I wouldn't mind whipping mine up into a bestseller. <laughs> you always carry your little black book? Well, I just happen to have an old suit on tonight, Marie, so it's in the pocket. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> No, you wouldn't want that one. That's, that's my bookmaker. Once in love with Amy. Always in love Amy. with Amy. Ever and ever fascinated by her. Set your heart on fire to stay. Oh, it's going to be that kind of a party. That's the plan. I the sweet of that That's right, huh? Sweeter than all I know. No. Gigi, am I a fool without a mind, or have I really been too blind to realize? Gigi, oh yes, I remember her well. I wonder why she kept me waiting. Who, Gigi? No, 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 Charmaine. Ah, Charmaine. Ah, Charmaine. Well, while you're wondering, I'd like to sing about my candy. I used to call her candy. I was so sweet on candy. She was sweet on me. <laughs> Gigi, am I a fool? No, 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 hold it. Hold it. You sang about her once. Well, you see, Maurice, we broke up. And then we got back together again. Ah. Oh, and her roommate wasn't that either. No. No. She was Chiquita Banana, and she used to say, I come from Little Island down Equator Way. We'd sing about the moonlight on the very, very tropical equator. And then she sang about bananas and their refrigerator. Ay, 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 ay. Olé! Well. We're going to do commercial. Go ahead. Come away with me, Lucy. In my merry old mobile. That's good thinking. You'll be back on the show. Good. Every little breeze seems to whisper oh, no. Louise. Birds in the trees seem to. No, 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 and as far as I know, she was completely true to me. <laughs> as far as you know. I warn you not to go too far, Monsieur Crosby. Don't anybody leave. This might wind up in a duel in the bois. <laughs> How she cried when I left her. Yeah, she cried all the way to my house. Oh. <laughs> okay, Maurice, we're friends. We'll be good friends. She's yours. No, 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 you have her. No, I don't want her anymore. Oh, no, no. Every little breeze seems to whisper the wind. Birds in the trees seem to twitter the wheel. Each little rose tells me it knows I love you. No, I don't you love you. Love you. Every little bit that I feel in my heart seems to repeat what I felt at the start. Can it be true? Someone like you could love me. Louise, you don't. That's the Kelly Rose. Stop crying. Good for nothing, Mimi. Am I the guy? Mimi, you sunny little honey of a Mimi. I'm making high. If you knew Susie like I knew Susie, <laughs> if I knew Susie like she would do it for you, yes. I knew Susie like you knew Susie. Oh. Oh.